Excuse me. What? Welcome back to that figure skating show. We are recapping the final stop on the Grand Prix circuit in Espo, Finland. All right, let's get it started with the men. Taking the gold of the USA, Ilya Malinin. With the silver from Japan, Shun Sato. And rounding up the podium with the bronze, Francis Kevin Amos. There was a lot of moving around in the men's event, and it was a nail biter right up until the end. After a relatively low scoring short event, Kevin Amos sat in top spot with the cleanest skate of the night and almost 89 points. Ilya Malinin surprisingly behind him by three points with a mistake on the quad combo and triple axel, then sat Shun Sato in third with 81. So began the great jostle in the free and Shun Sato was the first to make a statement. Puts down one of the best skates I have ever seen from him. He just couldn't put a foot wrong. Three gorgeous quads crown this free like Oh my God, that quad toe even has room for foam. He opens up so early. Emotional ending and a dual celebration from coach and student. And Sato is rewarded with a new personal best in the free of 180.62. And he knows he's done enough to be on that podium. Then came the favored winner, Ilya Malinin of the USA. Just like Skate America, he is chasing from behind and everyone was wondering, is the 17 year old gonna whip out that quad axle? But just barely hangs on with a hand down on the landing. The only obvious negative GOE in this program as he goes on to land the rest of his jumps, including an additional four quads and that elusive quad Lutz Euler style that he fell on with a cheapish smile at Skate America. But here, he lands it. Another strong skate, and clearly Malinin was happy with what he did, but he wouldn't get the marks he got at Skate America. A 192.82 is two points off of his 194.29 personal best. Definitely losing points for quality on things like landings and of course, skating skill. Then it was Amos's turn to bring his elevated and unique skating style to contrast that of Malinin's huge technical free. And boy, did this Frenchman bring it. You know it's serious time when you're rocking no sleeps. The clean skate was complete with two triple axles and an impassioned and dynamic choreo sequence as he enters his final spin. Pure elation on his face. Ugh, God, I missed seeing his reactions. Just exactly over the top, always what we need. He's excited, coach is excited, we're excited. And considering he had no quad and coming off a very recent and ongoing ankle injury, he had a great skate, but would it be enough? And Kevin does it. He gets a medal at his only Grand Prix event this season and his first since 2019. He even beat Malinin by seven points in the program components, showing that it's very possible to be competitive against Malinin and his quads if you have those great skating skills. Ilya and Sato take the two remaining spots for the Grand Prix Final, knocking out Adam Xiaohim, who I thought would be going far with those two beautiful programs, my favorite of the men's event. And I would like to mention Keegan Messing had a great short, finishing fourth, disappointing free, finishing eighth overall, and that will be the end of his Grand Prix season. Let's head on to the ice dance. Dripping in finesse and gold taking that top spot, Piper Gillis and Paul Poirier of Canada. For silver, we have the Americans, Caitlin Hawaiak and John Luke Baker. And with the bronze, Finland's Julia Turkila and Matthias vs. Luce. Huge weekend here for the Canadians, Piper Gillis and Paul Poirier. Their excellence continues to pop. Taking home their second gold of the season, 
by 20 of them things. Their golden promenade starts with a braggadocious and sharp rhythm dance that received level fours on all elements but what? One of those level four elements was their partial step sequence. Now the partial step can be the most boring in the rhythm dance as it breaks the character and flow of the routine as the ice dancers focus on their clean turn so they can receive the maximum level, but not these two. The category is body roll. And the panel agrees and the check clears for 87.80, a new PB in the rhythm dance. And they do not stop there. 24 hours and an outfit change later, they unleash a free dance that enthralled and lamented the audience with their painless speed, immaculate elements with big GOEs to match, and complex and delicate transitions that connect and bring those elements into the story of Evita. Even they couldn't help but shed a tear, both emotional as they leave the ice, and the score only embellishes that feeling as they hit yet another PB in the free and total score with 131.69 and 219.49. This is Piper and Paul's best work and the best that they have ever looked. This score in Finland puts them at the fourth highest personal best score recorded in Ice Dance, and the other three teams in front of them have all retired. Scores like these say, we would like another world medal, please, and make it gold. They are raring to go, and we will finally see them go head to head with the other top teams at the Grand Prix final in about two weeks. Caitlin Hawaik and John Luke Baker of the United States show us their incredible range from their PB earning rhythm dance inspired by Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz that will make you laugh to their neoclassical free dance that will have you calling your ex and apologizing for being a toxic individual. Excuse me. Although they were not as solid as we've seen them this year so far, like Piper and Paul, I would say that this free dance is their best work. Some unison issues and a little tightness on elements like their combo curve lift and twizzles led to losses on some easy levels, putting them just off their personal best. The Americans will take their second silver of the season to go as they are booked and busy for the final. Big day for Finland's Yulia Turkila and Matthias Versluis as they win their first Grand Prix medal and Finland's first in ice dance. They hit PBs in both segments and came from fourth in the short to third with a fast and Papadakis Cizeron reminiscent free dance. Next, the women. Enjoying the warmth of gold yet again is Mai Mihara of Japan. Silver goes to Belgium's Luna Hendricks and a redemptive bronze for Mana Kawabe of Japan. Mai Mihara of Japan wins her second Grand Prix title in two weeks, the only woman dual winner this season on the Grand Prix circuit. My, my, how did she do it? Her victory starts with a heavenly short that delivered her a new PB, but she still set a point behind Hendrix, who slayed her Mijentes program. Mihara still knows that she can do it, but the free was not perfect. The triple let's triple toe was turned into a triple double double. She does not rotate a planned triple flip, but comes back immediately with a second one in combo. She stays completely involved with her skating and performance quality, regardless of the jump issues. Despite being 15 points from her PB, 130.56 does the job. It's 0.23 better than Hendrix's total score 
and good enough for her second ever Grand Prix gold. All right, let's talk about Belgium's Luna Hendricks, who finished second. She was first after the short program, laying it down with that Mejente program, but revealed that she wasn't feeling 100% as she was heading into the free. And it might explain why she wasn't razor sharp in this program. A popped axle fell on a triple lutz and an under-rotated triple flip combo. But she fought right to the end. Her gold at International de France and her silver here means she has booked her ticket to the Grand Prix final, an event she thought she would never be able to attend. And then there's bronze medalist Mana Kawabe, who had a redemptive and consistent event compared to her disappointing sixth place finish at the Grand Prix of France. Finishing third in the short and a season's best free for second brought her the bronze, a cute little sibling for her 2021 Grand Prix medal. And a shout out to Canadian Madeline Skeezes as she grabbed some redemption from her previous Grand Prix showing with two strong skates and a fifth place finish. Let's head on to the pairs where everybody on the podium received their first ever Grand Prix medal. Taking the gold from Italy, Rebecca Ghilardi and Filippo Ambrosini. From Germany, taking the silver, Elisa Efimova and Ruben Blomart. And with the bronze, Anastasia Metalkina and Daniil Parkman of Georgia. As I had mentioned before, everybody on the podium received their first ever Grand Prix medal. Yay! But the big story here is Rebecca Ghilardi and Filippo Ambrosini taking the gold. The Italians dominated right out of the gate, scoring a new personal best in the short. So the pressure was high coming into this free. Not only was their first Grand Prix gold on the line, but so was qualifying the last spot of the Grand Prix final. Gold would be imperative if they wanted to compete on home ice in Italy. It was not a clean skate with two mistakes on their side-by-side -side jumps, but two solid throws in the second half of this free solidified their commanding win. They knew it was good and were right, hitting a new PB total of 189.74 and booking that ticket to Italy. Now, as they head to the Grand Prix final, they will finally go head-to-head -head with the other top teams. Things that they will definitely want to work on. Those side-by-side -side jumps are definitely hurting them. They drift apart, they're inconsistent, and Rebecca has a very pronounced rap. So if they want to remain competitive, they will have to really fix those issues. Their other pair elements are just money. Alyssa Afamova and Ruben Blumart and Anastasia Metalkina and Daniel Parkman take advantage of the open pairs field and pick up their first ever Grand Prix medals. A huge boost of confidence to them as they enter the rest of their competitive season. Six Grand Prix, six weeks of amazing skating. Tell us your favorite moment and who do you think is going to take the gold in each event at the final? We will, of course, be bringing you a preview and a recap of that, so we will see you soon. I know you la 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 loved that video, so subscribe so you don't miss anything, and watch more videos, because you loved it so much.